Also, and I'll talk about a package called pdfplotsx.jl. It's written mostly by me and Tamás Pop. So first, what is pdfplots? Well, pdfplots is a plotting package for LaTeX. Most of you probably know what LaTeX is, but it's a typesetting system where you can produce PDFs for papers, for example. It produces vector graphic plots that sort of looks good for some definition of good can use other LaTeX packages together with it to do different type of typesetting in these plots. And one thing that's it's nice about it is that it adapts to the font and the style you chose in your LaTeX document, so you sort of get a consistent view of your plots and uh, the rest of your papers. And for this reason, it's popular among scientists that write scientific papers. So what's pgfplotsx.jl then? Well, that's a Julia package to use pgfplots from Julia. And one of the guiding principles has been that it should be possible to go from pure PGF plot example that have been done in pure LaTeX and easily incorporate them in the Julia package. Because there's a lot of like, examples and tutorials that have been written for PGF plots in LaTeX and you should be able to use all of these uh, in the package. So it should be kind of like a low syntactic distance, if you want to call it something like that. But it should still feel like Julia. So that's sort of been the goal. And you can export to PDF, SVG, and PNGs, for example. And it's also one of the plots.jl backends. So let's look first how a pure LaTeX example would look in PDF plots. So here I'm putting in some LaTeX code here in a Julia string. So first, in a LaTeX document, you would have some preamble, it's called. It's where you can import packages. Then the main body of your document starts here. And here we have sort of the PDF plot inside LaTeX. So we can say we want to have a picture, it should have an axis with some options on it, and two labels here. In the axis we want to have a plot, there's some options here for the plot, then we have some data we want to plot, and then we add a legend, and then we're done. And what we can do then is we write this out to a file, and if we then run PDF LaTeX on this file, we get a PDF, and if we look how that one looks, we have our plot in there. So this is sort of how normal usage of P PDF plots would look like in a LaTeX document. So the first step to move this into Julia then is just to be able to uh, use this LaTeX string, but to have an inline preview inside, for example, the uh, notebook viewer, and also to be able to save that preview to a file. So first, uh, we could look at using the package like that. So we use the package. Then we have a preamble here. We can insert commands we want to use in our preamble. And then we basically just copy pasted the LaTeX code in here. And if I run this, I get the same figure here in previewed. And I can take this object here that I saved and I can save it to a PDF. And if I open that PDF, I get the plot here. So that's the very first step. Now the second step is, of course, it's not so nice to just use raw strings, so we want to use Julia types. So let's go one step further. So here I'm using LaTeX strings, so I can easily write sort of a LaTeX map in Julia. And now we have a new object here, which is a PGF plots axis. We have a PGF plots option here, which is basically like a dictionary. So we put in our options here for the axis. Then we have a plot object, and then we have the options for the plot, and then we have the data here, which is inside a table. So this is the same information as we had before, but instead of using strings, we move this into Julia objects instead. So now we're inside sort of the, the Julia world. And again, we get the same output, of course. Now the next step is to make this a little bit more convenient. So we introduce this macro, PGF, which provides some syntactic sugar. So the example before now looks like this. Uh, so you can see before we had used a standard sort of dictionary here, but now with the PGF uh, macro, we can just use these uh, braces here. And we don't need to have uh, these in the previous slide. These were sort of string keys in a dictionary. Now we can just write them as symbols 
here if we want to add sort of the smooth option it doesn't have a corresponding value so before we put a nothing for that value but now we can just write smooth here and then we have this is the same as before and we get the same plot so the point with this macro then is to be able to you know be able to write things a little bit more convenient so one more step then is to add support for types from popular Julia packages. So for example, there's some like colors.jl, we might want to be able to use those colors inside the plots. Data frames is a good way to store data. Contours can give us uh, contour plots and so on. So here I am using data frames and colors and I'm now storing my data inside a data frame here. And I'm also defining a color here, so kind of red almost. And what I can do now is that instead of putting the data directly here, as I did before, I can just put my data frame directly in the table. And I can also put this color object that I defined here directly into the plot here. And what we then get is we have a new color here, and I have the same data as before. So now we have a more convenient way of specifying uh, putting our data into the plot object. But still things still look kind of the same as they did before, it's just that we can provide the source here a different way, and we can provide here on the right-hand side of options uh, different Julia types. So a uh, common way you would use this then is to take this object that we created here, this axis, and we will export this to a tech file, and we choose here to not include this preamble in this tech file. And the reason for that is that we're gonna include this tech file inside a bigger document so here we have some a tech code again we load some packages Let's say we have a paper here we have a result section or some random text and then we create a figure here where we put in our tech file we give it some caption and this will then be sort of a part of our paper so if we do that and we run pdf latex on this we can look at how that pdf looks and then here we have our plot, and then we have a bunch of text here. So this is sort of how you would use this package in practice. And the last step then is that we have some API access to different things in the plot object. And this allows people to sort of build things on top of PGF plots X. And you can programmatically like add themes or make tweaks to the plot. And this is used by plots.jl to add this as a plots backend. So one example of what we can do is we can retrieve the Y label option from the access object, just like if it were a dictionary. We can also set it to a new label, just like if it was a dictionary. And we can take the first content of the axis, which is our plot, and we can delete options from it. So here I'm deleting the smooth option. And if we now look at this plot again, we can see we no longer have this smooth interpolation because we deleted that one and we have a new label on the y-axis. So lastly, I just want to show some examples of what uh, plots people have done with this package. So here's one such example, it's a kind of standard plot, but with two x-axis here, and you can see you have some math style here for the labels. Uh, here's another one with uh, some histograms with a few different labels. Uh, here's one more standard scatter plot. This one, I'm not sure what what's on it, but it looks pretty good. And it's also possible to do more advanced stuff. So here we have different spread of data along some axes, and then there's a different a different distribution here for different slices. And it's also possible to, uh, to do a bit more three D stuff. So this is the logo for the package actually. Yeah, I think that was everything. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.